So he is very much keen in making it a very beautiful and uh, successful function. And uh, uh, regarding Sindhu sir, he is a really uh, a, a scientist who was well known. And I welcome you sir. And uh, our guest speakers, Dr. Sarvamani, Madam from National Center for Biological Sciences of Tata Institute of Biological Sciences. Uh, I take this opportunity. Uh, uh, Madam, I am sure that your expertise will in the field of computational biology will enlighten the participants and I welcome you, Madam. And uh, Dr. Sairesh Kumar, I think uh, probably is a very young, young and energetic guy from the National Institute of Plant Genomic Research, New Delhi. And um, we are really delighted to you be here. And he is a computational biologist working on identification of non-coding RNAs from plant genomes. Uh, his vast experience in the field of bioinformatics, genomics, big data analysis, machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, and plant biotechnology, uh, that will surely have a greater impact on the uh, minds of students and the participants. Probably we will be also gaining much from him. I really, I am really delighted to welcome you, sir. And uh, Dr. Manjula, uh, Madam from Raji Gandhi Center for Biotechnology. She has traveled all the way from Trivandrum. And uh, her, her work is on molecular analysis of in, innate immune responses in Triper Negra. They, uh, they have generated high throughput proteomic and transcriptomic data uh, in black pepper. And, uh, and, and he, uh, she has found out the natural defense, Elistar treatment and functionally analyzed them for the expression of the genes, so uh, uh, expression and silencing of the uh, genes. She has made uh, the expression approaches and silencing approaches. Uh, we, we are, no doubt, Madam, your expertise in this field will enlighten the participants and I take this opportunity to welcome you, Madam. <laughs> the, uh, the senior professors and the head of the heads of the various departments, uh, Dr. Kodula Madam is here, Sudhagar is there, and our former uh, director, Mohan Kumar is also here. I welcome all my colleagues, professors, senior professors, and uh, the fellow participants and uh, uh, to this uh, function. And uh, I have all, we have all welcome to uh, to all of you and uh, to tell uh, tell little about the program. Uh, this is a DBT sponsored program. As regarding this department is working, may, uh, having many externally funded projects and equipped with bioinformatic resources like high-end servers, commercial softwares, and uh, the, uh, we have a very dynamic faculties. Uh, they want to make uh, to for this uh, fun, uh, this uh, to make this conference uh, a very useful uh, one to the participants. And uh, I really welcome all the faculties uh, of our department. And um, uh, the participants, we have very participants, nearly 200 participants have registered. University, Savita School of Engineering, Chennai, Vinayana Mission, Constitution Colleges affiliated to TNA, all the colleges, many participants have come. And also some universities around TNAU like Kumaraguru, Vinayana Mission, Pondicherry University, Avinash University, and many participants from other institutes also have registered. I welcome you all. And, uh, <coughs> I am sure that you will be benefited out of this conference and your interactions will definitely help everyone to gain maximum amount of the conference. And uh, this conference is scheduled for two days which includes various talks on the topics of the conference. Um, uh, we have invited speakers, posters and the oral presentation by the conference. This conference is where, uh, you know that the Center for Plant Molecular Biology and Biotechnology, we have Department of Bioinformatics, Plant Molecular Biology and Bioinformatics is one of the oldest bioinformatics center and uh, now it is uh, having the uh, DBT supported program. One, one such activity is uh, organizing this uh, national seminar. And uh, really uh, we thank the DBT for support of this uh, particular program and also uh, the team members uh, Department of Bioinformatics 
they are uh, they are anchoring this whole uh, national level conference. You all know, you all know that nowadays the people using the multi-omic approaches for crop improvement. Normally, any crop improvement program or variety development program, we started with normal uh, the basic domestication to selection to mass selection and hybridization and sometimes the crops with hybrid crops which uh, melt solidity system and every every decade the system is changing every time the crop improvements having different phases in which every technology rule sometimes mutation breeding sometimes hybridization phase sometimes now the the changing scenario make the crop improvement is try to use the very many advanced tools so like normally the the crops now start using the when when rice genome sequencing started from that many crop genome they start sequencing by that they are able to generate huge volume of genome data then this genome data they constructed and it became a, a baseline for other functional genomics then functional genomics came then after that people start working on the other metabolome proteome and uh, many of the omics techniques which came into market then it helps to improve the understanding on the crops and the trait which we are studying so people now start using the various omic technologies which always help for the uh, improvement of the crops every timeline the technology is always helping to improve the crops which when you stay genomics, it's when 70s and 80s people just use the uh, uh, use the Sanger sequencing method. Then at once up to now is the 90s and 20s people start using NGS technology. Now people going for nanopore and other uh, whole genome sequencing technology, which become very very cheaper and become more more useful user friendly now. Then people start studying the epigenomics because once you have the good information on genome then people start studying on the epigenome for that methylation is the one of the method where genome sequencing helps to study the methylated regions then people transcriptome also earlier we start with small rna seq with medium small est data now we go for the rna seq in a higher level and the spatial temporal level of rna sequencing so that much an, an improvement happens then the proteome also people started with simple proteome simple protein analysis Single single dimension now they become two dimensional. Now people working for the multi-top and characterizing the proteins. So metabolome also now he started with simple GCMS. Now LCMS, GCMS, ESAMS, many kind of advanced techniques helps to understand the metabolome in a rich, in a very uh, deeper way. Like like a lipidome and many metabolome they start using by LCMS or HPLC. Now the HPLC also now faster HPLC has a lot of improvements been made. So all these things will make the data become more and more generated and nowadays very big data being generated. So this big data become much of the very cumbersome process to handle this kind of big data, how to integrate this genome, uh, metabolome, proteome data as integrate, integratome people talking or multi-omics multi approaches people start working on them. Similarly, there are many crops already, the genome sequencing like rice, maize, wheat or soybean or sometimes a tomato, cotton and these are all the model genomes where huge data been accumulated. Those data now omics platform is highly exploiting those genomes because of structural genomes are well established. So the genome to phenome or transcriptome or they all will help to understand deeper insight to the any crop genomes. So these are all the having some of the challenges. When you go for functional analysis of a particular gene, whether we go the forward genetics like genome to phenome or you go for reverse genetics like uh, uh, genome to phenome, the reverse way you analyze. For that we have a lot of techniques available, whether the target mutants or tilling and many of the methods, ecotilling or microarray based or knockout mutant, many things are available to understand in a deeper way as phenome to genome or genome to phenome. They have data, huge data you can analyze on that. So, now the methylation and other things which helps to study on the whether epigenetic modifications happens or not. So when you talk about the simple way to work on any specific crops, like take an example in maize, people earlier use the hybrid technology, use inbreds and develop hybrids and work on that. Now the inbreds are hybrids which want to test whether the potentialities are there, now they look for QTLs or when the QTLs, when they look on that or sometimes precise genome reagents, they want to work on that. 
So now since the when genome sequence available, now they go for the development of digaploids, then use for genomic selections. So the now genomic selections, if you want to do that, you have to do large scale genotyping, either by LTS platform, they have huge data being generated. This data being used for any DX line being analyzed, then these inputs are predicted which kind of fragments will be there. Earlier, every company, every public sector institute, they try to look on the genotype of the inputs, then they try to predict whether this fragment will be suitable for the market. Not only that yield, but also they work for salinity, drought, and many of the abiotic stresses also people are working. The big data which we get from either from QTLs or GWAS data or something to use the phenotype data which is accumulated across location across the country. Artificial intelligence, now the big computational algorithm they are using. By that they find out the which is the functional allele which is responsible for this kind of speciality traits or yield. Then this will be used for the mathematical model. By that they use the specific traits they identify that they being used nowadays for the genome editing purpose. The other our CPMB groups are working on many uh, genome editing works because you have precisely no which so it's all helped nowadays to have a bigger uh, crop improvements can be done by using all the multi-omics techniques and using the recent day big data analytics and uh, they are using the huge genome data information. For that we need lot of uh, data servers, lot of processing method, everything. So for that uh, definitely uh, this seminar, this national seminar will definitely give an idea on various areas in which how this kind of multi-omic approaches will help you to uh, address the crop improvement issues. You know that our speakers also like Saudamani Madam working on medicinal plants very long time in Tulsi genome and you know that how the C used to assemble the genome and how it has been targeted metabolites he is working on that. So these are all some example will help you to know about how to address a particular genome. And I like, like Silesh Kumar also working on the uh, uh, genome data and how the mic novel microRNAs uh, or small RNAs they are working on that. This is also a bigger area now emerging once the huge genome data is available. Similarly, Dr. Manjula is working on the uh, pro 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 transcriptome and uh, some of the Piper genome she work. So this also give you some of the idea on that how these different genome they approached, how they successfully able to either isolate the major metabolites or how they integrate that uh, metabolomes with the genome data. So definitely the audience or the students or the research scholars who are attending this uh, national conference will get a holistic idea on how the new generation sequencing data on how the multiomics will help to improve the crops will get better idea. So definitely uh, I hope this uh, seminar will address the many of the issues and many of the uh, problems will be addressed and our uh, evident speakers will address all the issues. So thank you for giving me the opportunity, thank you for the organizer to made a uh, very wonderful uh, uh, audience and also diverse panel of speakers and definitely it will be a wonderful seminar. Thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity, thank you one and all. And therefore, uh, the knowledge based analysis uh, following a survey is absolutely essential and although the, we have many machine learning techniques that we will hear from Silesh uh, very soon, uh, accumulation of data becomes very crucial. And talking about accumulation of data, uh, in order to get good quality data, uh, we have to uh, engage sometimes with the farmers and uh, make sure that their life becomes a little better. So in all these aspects, uh, we are doing, uh, I think, the right, uh, going in the right way and asking the right questions. And I'm sure this conference will be a huge success. And at the end of the day, we hope that we can inculcate some useful information and uh, brighten your minds, create a spark in the students' minds uh, by means of our contributions. Uh, and uh, we will look forward to very wonderful talks that will follow. Thank you. Thank you to invite me for this lecture, basically. So, uh, in, like, uh, near you, actually, like, uh, uh, at the at your seat actually like when I was a student uh, how I, I felt you know at that time so uh, you know sometimes uh, uh, I feel that okay students may have some kind of like inhibitions or they they always uh, you know try to uh, I can say that uh, okay this is like tricky or this is like the we need uh, this we need that actually but the my desire is that 
if you if you uh, want to know if you want to explore anything you can do that actually and the resources uh, come later you know resources come later first is your enthusiasm so my main agenda where uh, i always do these presentations my main agenda is to motivate the students the data come later okay and the second thing is you know there is no like limitation of resources so you will find uh, resources to analyze the data sets or whether it's your like storage or computational power where i belong so we have a uh, training short term training program so for bsc students we have two months uh, summer training program so you can always apply you can always interact with me or any other scientist at nipgr not only in nipgr at uh, like di different institutions we have in delhi and cr so that you can uh, get new exposure you know so you have like at university you know at uh, and nearby institutions of course we have like uh, uh, dr roma is here and so we have different institutions but uh, you can always apply for internship as i said that two month in internship for uh, bsc student and we have six months internship for msc students not only for uh, students we have several other programs for faculty members as well like young faculty if they want to come at nipgr or any neighboring institute in delhi and cr we have several uh, institutions not only in agriculture science plant science but if you are interested in immunology nii is there icgb is there so multidisciplinary you know so we have these programs and uh, it's uh, your own as i said earlier that just explore you know just explore the things and you will be like uh, developed uh, as a scientist or as a better researcher you know so that's all about from my side and thanks again thank you very much thank you and good morning to all and i first of all thank the organizers and i am a part of the lab type of research and i have been working on a non model like uh, the packer system of black pepper and uh, phytophthora capsici which is a very unique uh, packer system i should say because it is a non model and not much of work has been going on in there so in my talk i will be sharing that and apart from that i am also happy that i will get to know from such dignitaries as dr uh, professor sagamini and uh, others here to the translate the findings to the field when we are working on crop systems so in this way i am really happy and hope that uh, students like you will get inspired by such people giving wonderful talks and sharing our own experiences in the field and i wish this conference uh, the best of Uh, success and i hope that things will get translated into action very soon thank you thank you for your kind words and respected and director cpmb respected teachers of cpmb the reason behind is that like uh, from around 50 million tons during uh, 1950s so now we have reached around the uh, level of around 350 million tons in our food production during the 60 70 years so we have increased our food production by 7, 7 to 10 fold and we have become the major producer or the top producer of several agricultural and horticulturally important crops so we are from the stage of net importer in several food crops so now we have become a net exporter of several crops so whether this growth will uh, allow us to sustain our production and then whether this growth will uh, allow us to grow at the same rate in the coming years it's a big question because of several factors like including increasing population on one side and then changing climate on other side on the other angles like declining yeah, land water and labor resources so sustainability is becoming a very big question and when we look into the options available before us to increase our food production to meet the projected demands and consumption like increasing the productivity or the increasing the yield of crops is uh, it's ranks among the top so apart from management technologies and other techniques because when we look into the productivity scenario like uh, uh, out of the potential yield or genetically predicted yield we are harvesting only around 50 to 60 percent so if you look into the literature or any uh, release proposals like so the variety would have any variety would have paddy variety would have registered 
from the level of around 3 tonnes to 10 to 12 tonnes across location if you take the ART and MRT trial. So this variety is really having a potential of 10 to 12 tonnes per hectare. But uh, after release and the field condition, it's registering an average yield of 4 to 5 tonnes only. Not even 50% of the potential yield we are harvesting. So what is the reason behind it? So many environmental factors and the emerging pest and diseases are changing dynamics of pest and diseases and abiotic stresses due to changing climate. So if you want to, uh, if you are able to increase the yield gap between the potential yield and the predicted yield and the realized yield, so then it's quite possible to increase or to reach the target, projected target. So how to increase uh, or how to reduce the yield gap or how to increase the productivity in a sustainable manner. So as I said, like we need to empower or we need to equip the varieties or plants so to yield the maximum under wider environments. We need to make our varieties high yielding, adapted to wider environments at the same time with uh, improved quality, etc., etc. So when we look into the, uh, the crop improvement program, so, so far we have made remarkable progress, so through, uh, what is that, um, uh, loss of function mutations. So then new plant types were made through manipulating single genes. But it's not going to be the simple journey or same journey in the coming years. We need to take care of so many traits at a time. So we need to uh, alter or we need to bring in uh, 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 yield genes, stress tolerance related genes, quality genes, etc. Altogether, we need to handle with around 50 to 100 dose at a time. So, assembling these favorable genes, it's not going to be that much easy. So, when compared to the earlier crop improvement program, so we need to have sophisticated at the same time, like very, very efficient tools for. Uh, assembling or bringing in the favorable alleles. So whenever, uh, if you look into uh, any recent papers in genetic mapping or kind of like functional genomics, so you cannot see any paper without seeing, for example, next generation sequencing or genomics, and then proteomics, transcriptomics, metabolomics, ionomics, etc. unravel. Say for example, even though the sequencing technology was invented during 1970s, so the real benefit of sequencing was realized or achieved during 2000, so when the first plant genome, so and then now we are in a position to handle even thousands of genomes at a time. Now we have around 1000 plant species have been sequenced, 800 to 1000 agriculturally important plant species have been sequenced. So uh, as uh, Dr. Senthil was mentioning like, so uh, we have uh, lost our uh, fashion or interest so on sequencing individual genomes. Now our interest is to cover the pan genomes like so the entire diversity of uh, the species. So we are interested to catalog. So such a powerful tool pan genomics and then like epigenomics, so methylomics etc. So they have empowered the scientists to unravel even miseries. So such a uh, one example is that, so when tomato genome was sequenced, so we were able to identify that 25,000 genes are there and they are encoding for these and these functions. But once the plant genomics of 700 diverse tomato lines were sequenced, so they were able to identify the 4,000 new genes which were not reported earlier in any of the tomato gene, genome sequencing project. 4,000 new genes, you cannot imagine. So you can identify the core genes, which is uh, constitutively present in all tomato genomes from the primitive to latest variety or hybrid. And then the unique genes or the cloud genes or cell genes, so which are specific to the particular, uh, what is that, wild relative or a yeah, land race or improved varieties you will be able to understand. So several commercially important genes have been unraveled or identified using the span genomics approach. Similarly in rice, you see like, so we, the rice genome was sequenced in during early 2000, 
but till 2020, so we were able to assign function for many of the loci which have been deducted already. But the revolution was made once the 3K genome was made available to the researchers. So they were able to identify and include allele of this ST1 in the same gene. One mutation is leading to semi dwarf, another one is leading to tolerance to deep water submergence, not the flash flooding. So the deep water submergence tolerance. And now several using the 3K pan genome sequencing data, they were able to identify some of the herbicide tolerant genes or loci or early, so for breeding application. So commercially important traits are being explored or unravel for breeding application. So then comes epigenomics, so several advanced methodologies have been uh, developed, so to precisely identify the modification which regulates uh, the transcription and translation of the genes. So once uh, these uh, imprints are identified, then it will be easy to manipulate these traits and it will be easy to monitor these traits. So using this fine genomics approach or your next generation sequencing approach, even you will be able to identify the haplotype blocks. So once you make cross between them, it's not necessary that only the linked genes which are located in physical proximity to each other will inherit together. So there will be thousand islands, so located elsewhere in the genome, they will be traveling along with them. Dr. Murukarthik will be explaining in a more detailed manner, you know, if you look into this paper, very, very useful information out of these pan genome experiments are presented by him. So one example is that he was able to identify sites which are favorable for mutations, so and then recombinations. So, so such a useful information, so very similar to your, you can easily target uh, uh, these loci for manipulations, etc. So using advancements in sequencing, so the, uh, what is it, uh, this empowered the breeding uh, programs to develop or to progress in an accelerated manner at the same time in a very, 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 very precise manner. So uh, evidences are there that, so scientists have monitored or even like uh, they tracked the inheritance of 50 to 100 favorable alleles in a multi-parental population, magic population. Even we have some examples in our own center. So we are monitoring the introversion of 30 to 35 different loci. So the next comes the transcriptomics. So transcriptomics during early days, during 1980s or 70s, we were going behind the laborious techniques like uh, RT-PCR or Northern Hybridization Analysis and then DDRT-PCR came, then CDNA library came, such a laborious techniques they were, but till then we were not having so any other options to understand or to provide the genes expressed in the genome. But if you look into the number of papers published on uh, profiling gene expression, so you cannot imagine like it jet tracked after the advancements in next generation sequencing, so direct RNA sequencing. Thousands of papers are published every year, so which led to the development of so the science called eQTL mapping or expressed eQTL mapping, etc. So they are much much powerful than your genetic mapping or normal eQTL mapping. And then proteomics and metabolomics. So till some five years before, till the advancements in mass spectrometry was made. So we were going behind conventional methods for protein analysis and then uh, metabolite analysis. But once after the advancements in mass spectrometry and relay especially bioinformatics. So one thing is that, so without advancements in bioinformatics, the advancements in genomics and proteomics so and metabolomics so would not have been possible. So the bio, uh, advancements in bioinformatics, parallel advancement, this enabled the accelerated development of genomic tools. So such a powerful component, this bioinformatics in the uh, genomics oriented crop improvement program. So once these proteomics and metabolomics were, uh, uh, what is that, customized for uh, the, uh, what is that, uh, profiling uh, gene expression, then so many mysteries have been unraveled like uh, medicinal plants especially and then stress tolerance till then till the advancements in 
proteomics and metabolomics. So the science of understanding stress tolerance was, was a mistake. So it was uh, no big conclusions were made. But once after the advancements in proteomics and metabolomics, so profiling was done yeah, in a diverse genotypes or contrasting genotypes, we were able to identify the factors which are responsible for uh, enhanced tolerance or resistance against biotic and abiotic stresses. Then again they went back to the genetic mapping, they were able to identify the genetic loci linked or uh, controlling the accumulation of these uh, proteins or metabolites responsible for uh, these processes. So the overall like uh, these omics technologies, genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics and metabolomics independently so they were powerful in addressing simple questions but the power of multi-omics combining all these together to address a, a specific question or uh, to make or uh, to develop a commercially important process so was uh, achieved through advancements in system biology and uh, synthetic biology. Using the knowledge generated by these different omics technologies. So we were able to synthesize even beta carotenoid in a bacterial system. So the cassettes, uh, the gene cassettes uh, controlling uh, or encoding for various enzymes, they were put it in a, a single vector and these systems were introduced in a bacterial system which was not able to produce any commercially or industrially important enzyme. Or uh, in crop improvement program, several examples are there. So like uh, if you look into uh, the application of say the haplotype based assembly or omics based uh, crop improvement. So there is a classical example from China, okay. omics approaches in crop improvement program. So in human genomics, so this field has gone somewhere. So they, they have even developed the diagnostic chips or uh, the protein arrays or metabolite arrays to detect the susceptibility of an individual to a diverse array of diseases. But whether we have such diagnostic chips in plants or the diagnostic protein arrays in plants, so the world will, will move in this direction, one side on crop improvement, other side on diagnostics, etc. So in this direction or in this context, so it's a timely topic. Once again, I congratulate all the organizers and that to CPMB and faculty of CPMB so for organizing such a wonderful event. And I, uh, uh, what is it? I wish the participant to and request the participant to use these two days so to interact freely and then you use this as a platform to learn the advancements. So once you go back, so try to implement at least one of the ideas that you have learned here or heard here. You are going to hear from the national experts and international experts on a wide array of topics. So the topics are well designed that uh, uh, no two topics are uh, overlapping. So each and every topic is having own value. So uh, these three, uh, today the three national experts are going to talk on the uh, genomics of medicinal plants and uh, long non-coding RNAs, Dr. Shailesh will be talking and Dr. Manjira will be talking on an important topic. Tomorrow Dr. Mandal will be talking the pan genomics or pan metabolomic approaches on tea, tea diversity. So what is the diversity of metabolites in tea genome? And then secondly, Murukarthi, I told you already. And thirdly, Akshaya was there and her own alumni. So she will be covering an important aspect. So try to carry some message back home and uh, use this as your platform. And I wish this event uh, a great success. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you, sir, for the enlightening words. Experience in this field. 
We place, uh, we are deeply indebted to the director CPMB and me, the, and the dean of school of postgraduate studies, Dr. N. Sentin, for his untiring support and close monitoring of every aspect of the seminar to make it a grand success. Artist, NCPS Bengaluru, for her felicitation. Madam, I would confess, every time I happen to pluck full essay, I'm always reminded of the comparison of the medicinal benefits of Krishna and Rama Tulasi, such is your passion for medicinal plants and it's highly infectious. Thank you, ma'am, for being with us today. We are very happy to have with us Dr. Sailesh Kumar, scientist NIPGR, for sharing his knowledge with young scientists and thank you, sir. The felicitations of, the, of Dr. S. Manjula, scientist from uh, uh, RCGB Tiruvannandapura, is uh, very valuable and thank you ma'am for sharing your rich experience with us. Thank you. Our, our deepest gratitude, we thank Dr. Professor and Head, Department of Plant Molecular Biology and Bioinformatics, Dr. A. John Joel, sir, and all team of his scientists for organizing this event, this special event. We thank all the faculty members of the CPMB, the scientists, the students, and all the research faculty for making wonderful arrangements for the successful conduct of the event. And we'd like to place on record a uh, sincere thanks for all the participants who have come all from various institutions. And we hope you have a very fruitful event for the next two days. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time,